morning, Ignite Church. I'm so glad that you're able to join us here today. We do have an amazing sermon for you. My name is Paul Evans. For anyone who don't know me, my name is Paul Evans. I'm the lead pastor here at Ignite Church. And I truly thank you guys for joining us here today. Uh, in, a, in a bit, I'm, uh, I'm going to give you guys a message that I've prepared. Uh, but I believe that God has placed it on my heart for someone special. For someone that's going through something. That, some, that somebody is is going through a, a thing in their life that they don't feel they're able to have a conversation with God. They, they, they don't feel that they're able to even come to God. This message is for you. And for every one of us who may be thinking that we talk to God sometimes, I'm telling you right now, with all my heart, God wants to have a conversation with you today. So let us pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for all that you do. I thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And Father God, I truly thank you for being exactly what you say you are, our King, our God. In Jesus' name, amen. As I begin to uh, tell you how this all came about, I'd like to tell you a testimony, or I'd like to tell you some facts about myself. Uh, my dad passed away about 15 years ago. And every once in a while, I could hear my old man's voice and as he talks to me, and that's our conversation. Uh, it's not so much a, con a live conversation, but more of a conversation of things that I can still hear him say. You know that feeling when you just know a person to pieces? And, and I knew everything about my dad. I'm the baby, he, and, he, and he sure did baby me. And... Um, even even now, it's been, like I said before, it's been 15 years since my dad passed away. And, um, I still have those kind of conversations with my dad. I can always think of things that he would tell me, especially when I'm doing wrong. He tells me things like, boy, you know better than that. Boy, you know I raised you better than that. And so these are the things I hear. And it's that conversation that I can still remember him, still remember his presence. And it's the same thing with God. God wants to have conversations one-on-one -on -one with you. God wants to have conversations that is not that he's a million miles in the sky, but that he's right with you, that he is right next to you. And so I want to show you in the Bible some conversations that he speaks both ways. And sometimes you have to talk to him like a father, because these were the kind, of the, the, the kind of conversations I had with my father. Like I said, I was the baby. So a lot of times, uh, let's just say I was persistent. And as the baby, even when my dad didn't want to do something I wanted to do, I would always come up next to him and say, come on, Pop. Come on, Pop. Come on. And it was always that persistent way. And my dad was a good, good father. He always kind of gave me what I want in some things. He always kept me safe, though. So as I begin to read this uh, conversation with God between God and Moses, I want to show you how God was persistent. Or, I'm sorry, that, that Moses was persistent with God and that he was able to change God's mind about something. Now, let's open up our Bibles. If you guys can open your Bibles up to Exodus 32, 9, verse 14. And here's a bit of this backstory. Moses goes up for the Ten Commandments, the commandments of God, for God, to give to the people. But as God sees them being disobedient and start to worship and idol other gods. God burns and rages with anger. And he, he begins to have a fierce for them that he wanted to kill them all. And so we're going to pick up the story right, right there in, in verse 9. Exodus 32 verse 9. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, your people, whom you brought out of Egypt, a great and powerful power and mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it is with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, 
Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all the la- all these land, all this land. I'm sorry, and I promise them, and and it will be their inheritance forever. And here's what 14 says. Then the Lord re- relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had in, uh, threatened. I want to go back here because there's a couple things that really stand out to me. There's a couple things that I just want to show you again. A conversation between Moses and God. And I want to bring out some, some points here. So the first point is, of course, the conversation. It's so important to have a conversation. It's so important to have a conversation with God. The second thing, persistence pays off. Just like any kid, and I have three of my own babies, and I have a daughter right now that wants to move in another room because she wants her own space and she doesn't want to sleep with her sister in one room anymore. I got one who says that, that the other one's so dirty, and I got one who keeps on leaving dishes and all kinds of stuff in the, in the thing, and I got one who won't pick up after themselves. So I got all kinds of problems, and they're all fighting and arguing. So my, my oldest daughter says to me, she says, Dad, please, 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 can I move into the guest bedroom? And I said, no, not right now, not this. And she's being persistent. Again, I want to tell you, in this story, persistence paid off. But here's some quick things I want to I wanna show you guys. And the third thing is, stand in the gap. Stand in the gap. See, because the story, he didn't have a conversation for something that Moses wanted. Moses was standing in the gap, in the gap for the Lord's people. So let's read these things. In the, in the, ten, in the tenth verse, It says, now, leave me alone. God is telling Moses, now just leave me alone. The conversation started and then God tells him, just leave me alone and let me have fierce with anger over these people who were being disobedient. But that's not where it ended. Because Moses did what? He stood in the gap. In in verse 11, this is what it says. But Moses sought... I want you to remember the word sought, that he kept on, that he persisted, he sought, he he wanted to go after God and his word. He sought the favor. What did he see? He sought the favor from God because he wanted to remind God of who he was, of his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. He wanted to sought and remind God on how good and gracious he is. And that he can turn from this anger. Why should your anger burn against your people, it says. He was reminding them at the end of the day, they're your people. Just like my children are trying to remind me. My daughter's trying to remind me that she wants that room and how dirty her her sister is. So just remember this. God wants a conversation with you. God wants you to sought after him, which means seek after him. Seek after his favor and be persistent and stand in the gap. Like I said before, Moses wasn't standing in the gap for something that he wanted. I think sometimes we get this mistake that if somebody wants something, they can go after it themselves. And yes, they can. Of course, we can all pray to God. But if you can stand in the gap, stand in the gap with us here at Ignite. Because we're believing in God to get rid of this terrible virus that's going around this world. We're believing in God for the power and the favor that God has. Pray with us. We're believing in God. And we believe in God. Amen. Let's let's keep on working on this. I believe God wants to show us so so, so much more. This is 12. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that you brought that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger and and do not bring disaster on your people. Again, he's reminding them. He's reminding them. 13. 
Remember your servant Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your, your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And I will give your descendants all this land. All this land I promised them. And it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord reluctant them and did not bring his people to disaster. Here's another story I want to share about a woman who contacted God, who had a conversation with God. In this story, there's a conversation between her and Jesus. And we're going to go to Matthew 15. So if everybody can turn their Bibles to Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. This is a story that I truly love. Because at the end of it, it talks about how God marveled at her faith. That she was persistent again. That she had communication with God. That she felt free enough that she could talk to God. So as the conversation went, she got a little persistent. And as the persistent paid off, she stood in the gap again. So in Matthew 15, 21 through 28, this is what it says. In 21, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to a region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the, that vicinity came to him, cried out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffers terribly. Jesus did not, not answer her. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. For she kept on crying out. I want to, I wanna, again, that's persistence. She was crying out. She got to the point that she's crying out to him. Jesus is ignoring her at this point, but it doesn't matter because she's crying out. How many times do we say maybe to ourselves, God, are you even listening? God, are you listening to me? But here's what I want to encourage you, church. Even if you pray the same prayer over and over, pray it again. Be persistent. Allow God to look at you and not give up on you. Allow God to not give up on your situation. Just remind him, just like Moses did. He Maybe God needed a little reminding. And so continue on. Continue to show God. Continue to ask God for your blessing. Continue to ask God what you need right now. If you need hope, ask God for hope. Right now in the spirit of the, that in the time that we are in fear, you need a little hope, then ask God. Maybe you're worried about your finances. Ask God. Speak to him. Start a conversation. Don't wait till tomorrow. Start it now. Start it after this message. Have a conversation with God. Communicate and be persistent. Stand in the gap. Uh, 23. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps on crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to, to the lost sheep of Israel. He was telling her, I did not come for the Gentile. I only came for the Jew. And this is the ultimate response. This is where persistence pays off. The Lord came and knelt, kneeled before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And this is what she says. This is my favorite verse right here. Yes, it is, Lord. She was correcting God. <laughs> she was correcting him. She was reminding him. Yes, it is, Lord. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. This is the most important part. This is her persistence. This is your prayer. Even if it's your hundredth same prayer, you've been praying this over and over and over. This was her persistence. And here's where it paid off. Because in the very next verse, this is what it says. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. In some other Bibles, in, in versions, it says that God marveled, that, that he marveled at her faith. Your request is granted, and your daughter was healed at that moment. Right at that moment, because her persistence paid off. But again, it was not for herself. She stood in the gap for who? Her daughter. 
Mothers, I'm talking to you right now. Maybe you have a child who's sick. Maybe you have a child that, that, that has a disease or that has an ailment. I'm telling you right now, keep your hope alive. Be persistent with God. Remind him that he is the healer, that he is our provider, and so that he is still our physician. And so please, I, I'm telling you and I'm encouraging you, continue on praying. Don't lose communication with God. Don't lose contacting God. Don't lose your conversation with God. Continue it because you're standing in the gap for your little child. And here's another thing I want to say. At that moment, the daughter was healed because of the mother's faith. Because of the mother's faith. Also, moms and dads out there, if you have a child or, or if you have a loved one who's out in the street, I know we have an epidemic here in this um, world right now. But to be honest with you, we've been having an epidemic. And it's called heroin. It's called drugs. It's called addiction. And so maybe you're dealing with a child who's out on the street. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, he's never or she's never going to come to know God. They're never going to come to know Jesus. They're never going to stop their ways. And maybe that's your prayer to God. But I want to encourage you again. Continue on. Pray because I'm believing in God and reminding him that, that we need him and him alone. That we need his help. And the only one that can help is God. There is no physician out here, worldly physician, that can help. There is no doctor or psychiatrist that's going to help you. If you're dealing with depression, there is none that's going to help you. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. It's God who's our healer. It's God who's our Savior. He saves us from destruction. And so I thank God for being God. I thank God for entering my life because I was on a path of destruction. But God saved me. And just like he saved me, he will save you because that is the God we serve because he is a good, good father. And that's who he is. That's who he is. And I thank each and every one of you for joining us today and listening to this message. And as I get ready to close, I just want to thank you once again for joining us. Father God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you again. And I ask, Father God, that I stand in the gap for the people who are listening, the people who are hurting right now, Father God, that you would come into their lives, that you would use them, that you would guide them, that you would protect them. And Father God, if they have children, just like the woman, Father God, I ask that you put your healing upon them right now. Send your children back home, Father God. Father God, I ask that you touch their life and that you get rid of all of our epidemics. In Jesus' name, amen.